Um, I can't see our participants. Um, not all of them. We have some on camera. We have uh, some on audio, uh, but this is being recorded so we can use it later. Okay, just let you know. All right, welcome everyone. I'm Jennifer Fry, Director of Patient Education and Outreach for New Cell Regenerative Health and a certified sex coach. Yes, there is such a thing. And with us, we have Alan Taylor. He is our medical director and provider of treatments. And we have Dr. Stephen Croft, our senior medical director, who is also an expert in wave therapy. We're also going to hear from two people. Uh, we're very lucky to have them. We have two guests uh, who I'm grateful for, for their willingness to speak um, on camera uh, about their treatment uh, for uh, sexual wellness. We have Kyla, a young adult female, and Matt, a middle-aged male. And um, so we're gonna keep this, we're gonna move fast through our material here so that people who are watching this, um, will it'll be expeditious for their time. Um, I do wanna say that there's really good news in our field. Um, we all know this, but most of the public does not know what great news there is in this field. Tissue change is possible. It's been possible for a long time, um, for years, and it's really not as difficult as the general public thinks. So our purpose in this webinar is to disseminate factual information here from patients who have already gone down these, this road, and also to kind of demystify what uh, is actually possible um, really at any age. Uh, I, I like to emphasize the, um, the, necessary, the, the necessity for satisfying sexual expression in most adult lives in order to achieve full happiness in life and uh, healthful wellness. And it's, it's something that is really difficult in our culture to talk about. It's not difficult for me to talk about it. Um, and so I always create a platform for uh, people to feel safe and come forward and ask for more, ask for, ask for better. Uh, and that's, as a team, what we offer here. So um, it's really a joy for me to do these, do these types of um, webinars and seminars. So topics on deck for this time period is PRP and biologics uh, as, as injections, wave therapy, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, uh, their impact on chronic medical conditions and overall health and also medication levels and therefore sexual health. Also alternative pain management, which every, all of us have noticed is an overlapping factor um, in anyone satisfying sexual expression, dealing with pain and also the side effects that come from a lot of medication. So alternative pain management goes hand in hand with this topic. Uh, all of the treatments that we talk about are effective just with different applications in both male and female. And I'd like to say any gender presentation. There's a lot of conditions and, um, in, in a human being, uh, especially in their genital tissue where in their full body, where they might need healing, regeneration, recovery, uh, turning back the hands of time. And we, we, tissue is tissue. Human tissue is human tissue and we can treat really any tissue. So we like to hear from patients. They tell us what they need, what they want to experience, and we will give them our best advice, which is why we emphasize consults. Okay, this is medically supervised treatments. So Alan, we're gonna start with you. Um, I'd like you to start with hormone therapy, both for men and women. What types of therapies you, uh, you use, what type, how you combine them, and um, what you've seen maybe certain cases that you've had that have meant a lot to you, and then how you layer it in with PRP. Sure. 
So um, interestingly enough, does anybody here know the average time of a medical visit in a doctor's office today? I'm going to guess 15 minutes. 10 minutes. No. What? 10 minutes. Less. Wow. 7.5 minutes. 7.5 minutes. Next time you go to your doctor's office or speak to a doctor or healthcare provider, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, 7.5 minutes. And some is less than that. So my question is, how can you possibly have a comprehensive talk about sexual health in seven minutes? You can't. And so here in our clinic, we take about an hour. And sometimes it runs more than an hour. But the thing that we communicate, that we accomplish is communication. And so in hormone replacement therapy, basically the human body needs two things to accomplish any movement. It needs a hormone and an electrical impulse. Without either of them, you cannot accomplish anything, including lifting your finger, or moving your tongue, or blinking your eye. And so hormone replacement therapy is very, very important in terms of ingredients uh, for hormones. And what I mean by that is micronutrient ingredients. So in order to make any hormone, whether it's thyroid stimulating hormone or testosterone or cortisol or epinephrine or any other hormone we're talking about, you need ingredients. And so those ingredients are copper, magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C, micronutrient testing. Um, and so you either absorb micronutrients through natural digestion or you have malabsorption problems and you don't absorb the micronutrients, and hence, you would then have a hormone uh, insufficiency. Now, in talking about um, sexual health, the hormone that is most important for the vagina is called estrogen. And throughout women's lives, estrogen and progesterone are two hormones that fluctuate like a seesaw. When estrogen is high, progesterone is low. When progesterone is low, estrogen is high. As we move throughout our lives, the estrogen levels in females drop and they can begin to drop at the age of 35 um, for a variety of reasons that we don't have time to go over tonight, but I'd be happy to talk to anybody about that any other time, uh, inclu including um, canned foods and other chemicals can make estrogen levels fall. In any event, the, the hormone of the vagina is estrogen. And what I mean by that is it provides lubrication, it provides Muscle, muscular strength. It provides uh, shedding of the uterine lining. Um, and it provides many other functions um, for sexual health um, with the vagina. Um, when you women experience um, a decrease in estrogen, they experience dryness. They can experience painful intercourse and a variety of other um, abnormalities. Now, who wants to talk about that? Nobody wants to talk about that, especially with their loved ones. And so there oftentimes becomes a communication problem. And in men, all of us will lose our testosterone levels as we age. It's natural. It happens to different men at different times. And when we, our testosterone drops, our muscles get weaker. Uh, we have difficulty sleeping at night. And you can develop uh, erectile dysfunction. Who wants to talk about that? Nobody wants to talk to their significant other about erectile dysfunction, so they don't talk to each other. So the next thing that you know, men aren't having sex with their wives or, or significant others, and women aren't, aren't really interested in sexual gratification either, because frankly, it's painful, and nobody wants to talk about it. So I've had a, a wonderful experience treating a, a husband and wife, and I, I often recommend this, for husband and wives or, or you know, sexual lovers to come in together. Um, and I, I make no judgment uh, as to whether it's a man and a man or a woman and a woman or a man and a woman, whatever. Um, I'm just here to help. And so um, my story is I treated um, two doctors. Um, they just happened to be doctors from uh, New York City um, and they were Indian. Uh, I don't know a lot about the Indian culture um, but they, they really, they weren't having really any sexual life whatsoever. And I treated them both. Um, 
and I treated them with um, PRP uh, and then additionally with stem cell therapy. Um, it was an injection into the man's penis uh, and I injected um, the female doctor's uh, vagina and her clitoris. And you may ask, was that a painful injection? The answer is no. Um, I use a numbing cream and we put numbing cream on for about an hour before the procedure and they both did very well. And when I talked to them about the communication, they, were, they, they said to me, you know, you're the only person that actually took the time to listen to us and see what our problems were and, proper, and have us communicate with each other. And they called me back about six weeks later and said that I changed their marriage. And it was a very powerful message. Um, so I, I just wanted to share that with you tonight, um, uh, just so that you know that, that it's a wonderful thing. It, um, is. it, it truly is. And, um, and, and we, can, we can replace hormones for both men and women. And, you know, we have your best interests in mind. Yeah, I completely uh, agree, Alan. Uh, and that's, that's how I'm really glad you shared that story. Um, for anyone who's watching this and they're not sure what exactly happens during a PRP injection, can you just real briefly describe the procedure? Of yes. Yes. So um, a really simple uh, PRP is just a blood draw. Um, just like any other blood draw, we take about six tubes um, of blood. Not a lot. It goes into a centrifuge. That part is really important. Um, it matters, you know, do you ever hear the cancer commercials? It matters where you start. I think that's Fox Chase Cancer Center's commercial. It matters where you start. It's the same in stem cell therapy. It really does matter where you start. I mean, you know, our, our not to get off subject, but our lab is uh, sterile. Our laboratory technicians are trained in sterility. Uh, I personally train them in how to spin the blood. So anyway, back to the procedure, it's a blood draw. It then goes into our sterile lab, it's spun. We do one patient at a time, so there's never any chance for any error with a blood error. There's only one patient here at a time. We then spin the blood, we draw up the stem uh, rejuvenation, um, whether that be the penis or the vagina or the clitoris or just overall vaginal rejuvenation, uh, we can do that too. Um, but the other thing too is, you know, is the hormones, you know, we, we really need to replace the hormones um, to, to, to keep, to keep the auto, to keep the body running. Right. So to, yeah. Well, that's why I like when people come in and have a consult with you, Alan, because, you know, you can identify what I call the spiral up versus the spiral down. People don't realize how quickly the spiral down can start and um, lack of affection and then, you know, weight gain and, um, not eating, not sleeping, and, and these things start to take, start to take a spiral down. But um, with very little changes, um, you know, after a consult with you, people can have a spiral up. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, in addition to those treatments, um, wave therapy, we, we know for a fact, has been very successful. A lot of people don't realize it's also very successful on women. And um, Dr. Croth, you are, you and I have done a lot of, uh, you know, public education around wave therapy and what exactly it is and how it's helpful, uh, mainly re in, re in reference to um, erectile satisfaction uh, and erectile performance. But we never, people never get tired of asking what exactly is happening. And so I always like to bring you on for you to talk about, because there's a lot of misunderstanding about what is actually happening in the body when the wave, this acoustically generated wave, also, also called extracorporeal shock wave therapy, what is happening in the body tissues when the wave enters the body and then why, it, and this happens anywhere in the body, but why it is so uniquely suited um, for to improve an erection and also I can talk about the, the woman's side but can you talk a little bit about explain again what exactly is happening in the body well sure sure thanks for having me on again it's it's always okay. nice to, to get a chance to speak with you and speak about uh, EPAT or yep. extracorporeal shockwave therapy um, so the 
the biggest thing we, we need to do, uh, two main things really, is restore nerve control and restore blood flow. All right, those are, are two big issues that generally affect um, non-emotionally uh, related uh, erectile dysfunction. Right. So if we're looking at what the, the sound waves actually do in the tissues, now there was some concern, people were wondering if there's actual shocks that occur, it's, and it's nothing like that. These are sound waves that are generated from the transmitter. And as they pass into the tissues, they create what are called a cavitation effect or these cavitation bubbles. Um, and these micro bubbles, when they collapse, they create a little um, a jet of force, shall we say, and that triggers some cell turnover. So what happens with the cell turnover is we get um, breakdown and reabsorption of old, um, shall we say, less useful cells. So the body starts clearing those out. We start signaling the uh, stem cells to turn on and start producing new healthy cell tissues. By doing so, you're getting generation of new nerve cells and neovascularization or also new blood vessel growth. Part of also what happens during these, uh, the passage of the shock waves through the tissues is if for some reason there is um, any uh, plaques or clogs, shall we say, in, in the blood vessels, it can also clear those out and help restore blood vessel flow through vessels that are already there. Yeah, and um, it's, so the actual changes that we see uh, in patients is dissolving scar tissue uh, because of these, because of what you're describing that's happening in the tissue. I mean, we can dissolve scar tissue anywhere in the body, but it's very helpful with Peyronie's. Um, and we can grow blood vessels, of course. I mean, what better place to grow a blood vessel than in the genital tissue when, when someone is having a less than satisfying experience? Um, we can, you know, we turn over the stagnant cells. It's, uh, you know, we see retraction um, reverse itself because this, this, this wave will realign collagen fibers. It'll work on exactly. the fascia. Yeah. So it's great on pelvic floor. Um, and as far as um, for treating women, you know, it can, it's a big help with the vulva area. It can help heal after uh, injury, after, you know, traumatic childbirth, after, you know, there's a lot of conditions um, that it can help with. And I'm really happy, um, really, truly happy to welcome Kyla. Hi. Uh, Hi, Kyla. Hi. I really want to thank you for being willing to come on here and, oh, and yeah. talk. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Okay, super. So, uh, Kyla, how old are you, if you don't mind me? Is to, like, I, obviously, you're a young adult. How old are yes. you? Yes, yes. I'm 23. I'll be 24 in about a month. Okay. So, um, as, as much as you're comfortable, could you talk a little bit about what you noticed in your life and what wasn't going well and what you wanted to change? Right, right, yes. So um, at a very young age, um, I noticed that I did have problems with, um, you know, my pelvic area, a lot of pelvic pain. Um, at the time, I didn't know what it was because at the time there wasn't a lot of information on it and I was so young, so I, I, didn't, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to talk about it. Um, but finally, when I was 20, I ended up going to a pelvic floor specialist in Philadelphia, and I was diagnosed with vulvodynia. Um, vulvodynia is pain in the vulva area, um, the entrance of the vagina, any penetration, sitting, any tight clothes, um, anything like that, anything that's really restricting the area. Um, vulvodynia actually is, which I had learned a few years later, it's actually just a symptom of a different problem and I noticed that um, I had a lot of tingling a lot of prickling in like my sacrum area and it was just getting worse and worse so definitely the last year um, I took a lot of time to really dedicate my time to you know figure out what is actually wrong what is the root of the problem and I ended up finding out that I did have pudendal neuralgia which is one of the nerves that runs from the sacrum 
um, to the genital areas, to your perineum, to the anus, um, you know, like the lower buttock area, down your legs and stuff like that. So it's kind of like sciatica, but um, in the sacrum instead of like your lumbar. Um, so um, yeah, I found out that was the issue and that I need to needed to figure out what it was. I couldn't sit for a long time. Like I said, I couldn't wear any jeans, anything tight. Um, sex was definitely, mm-hmm. you know, a really bad problem for me. I remember asking my friends, uh, is this normal? Like, is it supposed to feel this way? And everyone would say no. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, I just really had to figure out, you know, how to fix it. So that's what I've been doing for the past year. And um, yeah, so you, yeah. So you had, a, you had a biologics injection and you also um, did wave therapy. And um, how long did it take after either treatment did you start to notice uh, any kind of improvement? Um, So for the stem cell, um, the improvement probably started uh, after a few days um, after the um, injections, I did feel like uh, like, like tingling and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So I almost felt it working, like it was actually Mm -hmm. insane. So I almost felt it working. Um, and then when it came to the, um, wave therapy, therapy, yeah, for the wave therapy, um, it took probably about four. So like the first four, um, treatments, I still kind of felt like a little sore after, um, but after the fourth treatment, I want to say is when I was finished, I can almost feel like my entire pelvic floor be um, relax. Cause that was another issue. I was always super tense all the time. Mm-hmm. It's almost like I had like my nervous system was like centered in my pelvic floor. Um, so when I would finish, you know, after the fourth one, I would almost feel myself just be completely relaxed. Um, it felt like the blood and like the tissues, I would just like engorge in that area. And it just right. like helped me realize that, okay, I'm relaxed now. I have to stay relaxed. So it, you could definitely feel the tissues almost like rejuvenate. Um, definitely for me after the fourth treatment. Um, yeah, it was incredible. I, I really enjoyed the feeling. And once I realized, oh, I can be relaxed and I can have like, you know, like feeling in this area, um, that right. also helped me continue to um, help myself recover. Okay. So, um, what would you, you know, women just don't talk about, I mean, what would you, women don't know that other women are dealing with this. What would, what would you say to other women about how did you find, you know, who did you talk to? How did you decide to get treatment? Um, wow. It was really hard for me because I feel like um, I started feeling this, these, this like aching pains and all these uh, shooting pains and, you know, things like that from a super young age. I think I was probably like 16. I remember going to my mother and being like, I don't think this is right. I don't know what to do. Um, So that was like 16 to about 20. I finally went and uh, saw like an actual specialist before that in between um, I would go to like a regular OBGYN and they'd be like, Oh, well, have you tried lube? Have you tried different, Mm -hmm. um, different positions this that and the third and I'm like no you're not listening like something's wrong and then they tried to do like oh let's test you for yeast let's touch you test you for an STD and I'm like I, I promise that's not it but you can do it yeah but, women, um, know. women know when something's not right yeah exactly and I feel um there are so many women out there that go through the same exact process just you know people just not listening so that's when yep. I have to take matters into my own hands because you're going through all of these, you know, different physicians, different doctor's offices, different tests, and, you know, like medical bills are pretty expensive as well. So especially when people aren't listening to you, it's, um, it's hard. It's, you know, I've, I've been in doctor's offices. I've, I've cried in front of, you know, doctors just, you know, pleading, please, please, please listen to me. Um, but what I do want to say to women that there are answers and there is a path to recovery because for me, my uh, situation, I would say, um, from what I figured out, from what I researched on my own, is um, it had a lot to do with my posture. I had a really bad posture. I had a lot of my um, weight in my pelvic floor. I have recently joined Volvidenia groups on um, Facebook and pedonalgia uh, groups on Facebook. A lot of them are saying it's from uh, they've gotten their you know neuralgia and their neuropathy from uh, birth control pills, hysterectomies, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
bad surgeries and stuff like that. And it's just insane because I'm like, there are answers and everyone's putting them on all these pills and antidepressants and they try to put me on antidepressants. I'm like, it doesn't work. That's not it. Um, you know, there's just other answers. There's other medicines and there's other things you can do. Um, uh, after the uh, wave therapy, I've also done um, dilators. I've done um, wow. wand work, like a pelvic floor wand that really helps too. Lots of stretching, um, lots of uh, posture exercises. It's just something that you have to, you know, keep up with. It's not something that goes away, unfortunately. It is a uh, debilitating, you know, issue, like a chronic issue that you just have to work at every day. And then you just, you just can't give up. You know, that's what right. I would like to tell women. You just can't give up on it. You know, there, mm -hmm. there are things, there are ways to, you know, get through it. Um, yeah. yeah. And, you know, Thank you. And listen to these doctors sometimes, you know, you know, what's wrong with your body and, you know, you just got to go after it, got to find some answers. And I know it's hard, but they're out there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Kyla. Yeah, Thank absolutely. Absolutely. Really a lot to me. Thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully no you problem. reach somebody. All right. <laughs> I hope so. All right. We're happy to, we'll treat you again if you need it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks, yeah. Kyla. Thanks for being on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good Thank night, guys. You. All right. So um, we also are going to hear from Matt. Matt is a uh, completely different um, story, um, but uh, equally equally compelling. Hi, Matt. Thanks for being here. Can you hear me? Can you can you Hi. hear me? Okay, Matt. I'm just I'm well. Oh, thank you. Fine. So, if Hi, you don't Matt. mind me asking, how old are you, Matt? Uh, fifty three. You're fifty three. Okay, and so. You know, you're like the typical guy. What what led you to seek um, treatment for sexual enhancement? Well, I think like anything else, as we age, things start to slow down a bit. Um, I kind of noticed it in my 40s, uh, but it was it was gradual, it really was. And um, so over time, I, especially once I hit my 50s, uh, I started to notice um, some things changing. You know in terms of sexual prowess and the, the, um, you know, the, the, the urging of it in terms of, you know, the, the feeling of wanting to have sex right. more often and the drive. Yeah, the drive has slowed yeah. down. Yeah, exactly. And, um, the frequency of, um, uh, of erections, okay. uh, the, the duration of erections, you know, kind of sloughed off a bit. And like I said, it was gradual, but it becomes very noticeable at times, especially when you don't pay attention to it for a while. And then all of a sudden you get to the point where it's pretty noticeable. So I decided yeah, at that point I had to do something. When I have patients, you know, you're our age, uh, you know, and they say, well, I guess this is what I can expect. I mean, at my age and I just say, well, you know, we could live another 20, 30 years. Is this what you, is this how you want the next 20 to 30 years to go? Because this is probably, you know, and then no, no, it's not. I mean, so it's not that, you know, there is things that we can do. Wait, so you, when you had wave therapy, um, talk a little bit about that. What did you notice after it, after your wave therapy treatments? Just a little bit about that part of it. It was pretty amazing. It was, and it was pretty apparent early on after the treatment that um, things went back to a point in my life where things were working really well. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the clock turns back, right? It really does turn the clock back. Yeah, it's um, it. Uh, I noticed getting up in the morning and having the morning erection again, which yep. you know, that was that's that's every man's friend for a long time, right? right. Until it's not, right? <laughs> and uh, and unfortunately, that um, I had gotten to that point, but then it reversed that, and I started noticing that. And then I I started also noticing kind of random erections in the middle of the day, like just. Mm -hmm. When I wasn't even thinking about anything, it, things, so that happens when you're a youngster, you know, the old, uh, in the middle the of class, two, the teacher tells you to get up, you know. Those are the two requests that we usually get from men, the spontaneous erection, they want to see that back in the morning erection. That yeah. Men are very disturbed when that best friend doesn't come around anymore. Exactly um, right. 
Right. So, and then you also had um, PRP in your shoulder for pain, which you've, uh, you talked about previously. Real briefly, what was your results from that? Uh, well, the, the PRP shot was amazing. I mean, you know, I didn't have use of my right arm for about a year, fearing surgery, being the only, um, you know, modality that I could go to to fix my shoulder. I knew I had torn something in there. Then I waited about a year. Uh, you know, men can be dumb about those things. I waited a while. Unfortunately, I shouldn't have waited that long, but went and had an MRI, and uh, there was a pretty massive tear in my one tendon, and uh, that was causing the issues and the lack of mobility in my arm and lack of strength. And I decided to uh, find something to do. And I talked to a friend at the gym, and he told me about PRP, and I looked into it. And I, in the beginning, I thought it was too good to be true. It just didn't make sense that you take your blood from your own body and put it back into your body. Um, but then when I read more, it, it uh, certainly made more sense. And uh, then I decided to have it done. Um, it was simple. It was quick. Uh, it's painless. And um, it took about three months uh, and uh, about a month of physical therapy. I suggest the physical therapy highly because I hadn't used my arm in about a year the way it should have been used. Uh, I had to get P PT physical therapy to to get the muscles back to where they were in terms of strength and, and mobility and so on. Uh, but with the one, one month of physical therapy and three months of time of healing, my shoulder was back to normal. It was unbelievable. I would, I would have PRP anywhere in my body as a regenerative uh, effect because there's no chance of anything going wrong. And, and I can tell you firsthand that it works extremely well. So what other, I mean, is there anything else you do personally, just as an aside, other like, other healthful or wellness practices that you think have been beneficial? I know like a certain, keeping to a certain diet and avoiding alcohol and things like that before PRP injections. And these are some advices that, you know, different advice that we can give so a patient has optimal results. But I'm just thinking generally, anything else that you do that you think has helped? Oh, certainly working out. I mean, I always feel like working out is the fountain of youth, bone density and muscle density, you know, carries us into our later years um, and keeps us strong and firm and, and healthy in many ways. Um, certainly diet is obviously extremely important, getting the right nutrients into your body. Um, you know, also, um, you know, at, at New Cell, they offer uh, IV drip therapy, vitamins yeah. and micronutrients. And that's, that's fantastic. I've had it done and it's amazing to be able to get that concentration of, of nutrients into your body in an hour and, you know, and, and get what you're lacking. Um, they can also find what you're deficient in and create a customized approach to getting your, your vitamins and micronutrient levels back to where they should be. So, you know, there's a, those are the things sleeping of course is also super important. Uh, but if your body's not in alignment, you're not going to sleep well. So, right. you know, you have to do all those things. It's a formula and it's an right. effort and it's a discipline and you have to do it, especially as we age. Right. And wellness, you know, is a lot about being in balance. And so this is, you know, it's per any patient coming in might need something completely different to bring them back into that balance. It could be the micronutrient sure. and alternative pain. It could be alternative pain and wave therapy. It could be PRP you know, with, uh, with alternative, you know, it's just this combination of, it's puzzle pieces, okay? And you, we, we try to figure out what the puzzle pieces that's missing. Um, but mm -hmm. and thank you, Matt, for being willing uh, to talk about it and, um, and you know, uh, it, you know, encourage, making it seem accessible to other men that it's, it's okay to ask for this. And um, I'm glad we had Kyla on here too, making it okay. That's kind of what we want to do. We want to make an environment where it's okay, you know. To oh, it's more than okay. It's, it's, you know, people, you know, I think we've been conditioned in America to go to a doctor, you get a pill and you go home, you swallow it with a glass of water and everything's supposed to be okay. And we've found out that that, that has its shortcomings uh, in many ways. And I think the, ch the thinking has to change in America, it's it's not that simple. Uh, some people, you have to put work in, and you know, again, there's discipline behind that. But uh, I think seeking out alternative methods to for wellness uh, is becoming much more in the forefront than ever before, which is tremendous. 
And, uh, but it, it's out there and there are so many clinicians right. out there that are, that are offering different modalities that uh, don't involve just taking a drug and hoping and you know, praying that that works. It, usually it doesn't. There's too many side effects you have to deal with and who wants to deal with that? Not me. Great. Well, um, we're butting up against the end of time. We had more topics that uh, we wanted to talk about. Um, Dr. Croth, I did want to bring you in for some more, but I think um, we're going to, our time is going to be cut off soon. So I just, in case we are cut off, I just want to thank everybody, especially uh, Matt and Kyla for- Oh, my pleasure. Yes, thank you all very much. We're speaking on this. Um, I, I see we're still recording. Any final, uh, any, Dr. Croft, do you have anything, I, any thoughts on this? I do actually have something I, I would like to add. Um, uh, first of all, with regarding what you and, and Matt were talking about, um, I think sexual health for, I mean, as we know, for many, many years has always been such a taboo topic. Um, when it, in, in, certain places, especially like New Cell, um, it's starting to become something that, that should be just as, as easily discussed as working on the shoulder, you know? Mm -hmm. Things aren't working right sexually. My shoulder isn't working. It, it's starting to become that. And New Cell has really, I mean, ever since I've been working with you guys, you've always made patients feel comfortable, um, open, uh, very supportive. So, and I, I think that's huge. Great. Yeah. I, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm a big proponent of regenerative medicine. Um, you know, I believe in it or I, you know, it's, I, sexual wellness is, or uh, optimal sexual functioning is a lot of pieces of the pie. There's a lot of things that are different pieces of the pie. Tissue regeneration is one piece of the pie, but it's real. And it's, it, it's very effective. So we can regenerate tissue and also turn around chronic conditions, provide an alternative um, pain uh, treatment, get people off of um, you know, medications that at first helped and is now putting the body in a, in a condition where it's, it's no longer keeping up with its normal wear and tear of normal operation of the body machinery. And we're living longer. So, um, you know, I, and I've done these too. I mean, um, I've, I've had the sexual rejuvenation injection. Um, I've done um, PRP um, is for aesthetics. Um, I've done um, biologics on my face. Um, we've done, um, uh, I've done the, up, the injections for the upper breast enhancement, which is a fullness um, for, you know, especially, you know, I'm in my 50s and I breastfed, you know, 20 something years ago and things have never been the same. So um, these are healthful and natural um, options that, uh, that, that are available to people. And um, all of us who are in this field uh, know this and utilize these therapies. It's not science fiction. So I just, I, we're about to get cut off any second. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up really quick. Thank you for everybody. Um, I want to uh, in, invite anyone watching to schedule your consult. We do a great job, the consult. And I want to emphasize this is medically supervised treatments. Um, you don't have to suffer and, we, and come as a couple, okay? When one person improves, the other person might as well improve. People don't do this to masturbate better, people do this to have connected connections. Um, so, um, Alan, do you have any final thoughts while we're wrapping up in like a couple seconds? Um, yeah, just come in for your consultation. We're happy to see you. Um, um, give New Cell a call. Um, we're actively uh, doing consultations and schedule yourself for uh, at least an hour. And um, you know, we're very COVID compliant here. Uh, we do not have a waiting room. Uh, the waiting room looks like your living room. Um, uh, it's a beautiful, brand new, wonderful office. Um, and it's just a new way of practicing medicine or not practicing medicine. It's just a new way of, a new way of being kind to people. So, yeah. That's right. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. We're going to sign off. And um, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.